Welcome back to the Yes Longevity Podcast, where we give you insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and live better. I'm Chris Borda, owner of Yes Fitness, and well, my screen doesn't look good today. I'm not sure why, but we're going to go with it, just the way it is, because Facebook does what Facebook does. <sighs> Thanks for taking some time. This uh, beautiful Tuesday afternoon. still a lot muggy here out here in Burlington, Connecticut, but I hear the weather is going to break pretty soon. Uh, the only housekeeping we have right now is that uh, we will be closed on Labor Day weekend. That will be Saturday, Sunday, and Monday will be closed. So enjoy that holiday weekend. It's coming up pretty soon. It does signal the end of summer, but the end of summer always brings new things, especially New England, different weather, scenery, changing of the trees and things like that. So always look forward to the change of the scenes. So sceneries, seasons, I should say. So today, what are we going to talk about today? What I want to talk to you about today is to help you understand why flexibility or stretching is just not enough to correct the body systems to move properly, to increase performance, increase your results, and reduce your risk for injury. Those are the things that we want to talk about here a little bit. And I talked about a little bit last week uh, with the kinetic chain of the body, how it goes from a very stable joint to a very mobile joint and back and forth like that. So now we're going to talk a little bit about muscles and how the muscles really get involved in this. And it has a little bit to do with what's called the length tension curve and how much force the muscle can produce and when's the best time for the muscle to produce that. And I'm not going to get too scientific on here, okay? But I do want you to understand that when we're done with this conversation, that you'll know and understand that it takes more than just stretching your chest to improve your posture. It takes more than just stretching your chest and trying to do some row motions to improve your posture, to improve that hunched look or improve the, the flexibility in that hip because we sit all day long. So the hip flexor, the muscles that attach between the, 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 um, the pelvis and the thigh get tighter. And then next thing you know, we have an arched back and we have some back pain or we could actually have knee pain or whatever it might be. So. I want you to be able to understand it a little bit better, okay? So here's what it's all about. In the sarcomere, okay? Sarcomere, let's just think about that as a little thing inside our muscles. Inside the muscles, there's like maybe 100,000 sarcomeres in our hip flexor muscle, okay? My hip flexor muscle. And inside a sarcomere is what's actin and myosin, some proteins that overlap, okay? And when they come together like this, when they contract, it's what makes the muscle contract. Just acting in mass and coming together, the muscle contracts. So when, if you're standing tall, and just standing naturally, we are talk about the hip flexor muscle, okay, which again is the muscle between the pelvis and down in the thigh. When, when you're standing correctly, when you're standing tall, that um, muscle's at its normal length, okay? But at its normal length is not when it's at its best or at its strongest. It's not when it can produce the most force. Actually, when a muscle is about 20% longer than its resting position, it has its best force. So that actin and myosin is at the exact right distance, okay, to get the, to be able to create the most force when it crumbs together or when the muscle closes together, crunches together, right, when it contracts. So to create the best force, sometimes when we do things like plyometrics, we want to lengthen that muscle just a little bit to be able to create the most force that we possibly can. That's the purpose of a plyometric exercise, a jumping exercise, or, or when it's catch, throwing and catching a medicine ball or something like that. But so what does that have to do with our muscles and keeping our joints healthy? So when that muscle, okay, when that hip flexor muscle is at its normal length, there's about a We'll say 100,000 sarcomere, okay? As we sit and the muscle gets squished together, right? All, it's going to get shorter and shorter because as we sit, the joint between our hip and our thigh gets smaller. So that muscle gets squished together a little bit, okay? It gets compressed. And as it gets compressed, the space of the, that the sarcomere can have, okay, gets less and less and less. So our body likes to adapt. It's just biologically how it works. It likes to adapt. So what's it going to do? 
it's going to make space so that the sarcomeres can have the correct spacing so that they can work correctly. So it has the right distance between those filaments to be able to produce force. So the body will get rid of some sarcomere. So instead of 100,000 in there, now we're down to 60,000, say, okay? What happens when we get rid of 40,000 sarcomere? The muscle gets weaker. So now that hip flexor muscle is weaker. Or for example, with our chest muscle, when we're crunched in here tight, right? So the muscles right here in the shoulder all tighten up. When it tightens up, there's less space for those sarcomeres. So the sarcomeres are gonna go away. To get to the amount of point, get the amount of sarcomere in there, that will have the correct amount so that it's, it, it can forcefully produce um, power at the, at the right sense, okay? So this is gonna get rid of some. So now what happens on the other end here, right? On the other end, if we're talking about the hip flexor, your backside of your glutes get longer. They get longer, or if we're hunched over like this, the muscles in the back get longer. So now we have these sarcomeres supposed to be nice, nice spacing between the sarcomere. Now they're spread out and they're stretched out and there's too much space. There's too much room. So what happens? The muscle gets weaker. So now we have a weak muscle on the front. We have a weak muscle on the back. And the body's going to adapt and it's going to try to create more sarcomere to fill up all that space. Right, so now we're gonna fill up the space so that muscle can get strong again. And this might take two or four weeks for this to happen. It takes a few weeks for this to happen. It's not gonna happen overnight, but two weeks. But you know, many of us are in this hunched over position a lot of the time, or sitting a lot of the time, whether at a desk or sitting in our cars watching TV. So these muscles have a lot of time to adapt and gain or reduce the amount of sarcomere we have in there. So now we have this long muscle that has all these extra sarcomere in there, right? So we go along and we say, okay, so what's gonna happen here? My chest is tight or my hip flexor is tight. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go in a doorway and stretch my chest, or I'm gonna go and do a hip flexor stretch. You're gonna stretch those muscles out. Well, the body's not gonna let you do that for this reason. Neurally, what's happened now is the body's adapted neurally as well. And kind of the, the, the not the software, okay, he's gonna tell the hardware, the muscle, what to do. So now that this muscle in the front, on the shoulder, pec muscles, or the hip flexor muscle, is all tightened up like that, neurally, the, the body's telling that muscle to fire and to be tight, okay, to be firing, it's, it's an active muscle. Whereas now, the opposite side, the back of the shoulder, or your backside, is to be told to relax. So it's going to be even weaker. So now we just have a joint, whether it's a hip joint or the shoulder joint, where the muscle imbalance is way off. The muscle's shorter than it's supposed to be, the muscle's longer than it's supposed to be, it's not firing correctly, the software's not telling the muscles what to do correctly. Then we take this and we go to stretch the chest. So what happens is we try to stretch the chest. Now the sarcomere that we have all this long muscle with all this sarcomere, we already know what happens. It gets crunched down a little bit. Now we have extra sarcomere in it. The body's gonna get rid of some sarcomere so that muscle's gonna be weak. It's just a vicious cycle. And we're not doing the body right. We're just not doing the body right. So now what happens, okay? There's a little bit of next step to this. We understand that the body's gaining or reducing the amount of sarcomere in the muscle so that the muscle can perform correctly. But it won't because it's changed the length of the muscle. We have this shorter muscle now. We have a longer muscle in the back, right? Because we're hunched over. Same thing with our hip flexors, shorter muscle in the front, our long glute muscles in the back. So the front, the hip flexor muscle, is now being told to be strong, okay? And it's overactive. When the muscle's overactive, which is called um, reciprocal inhibition, it's telling the glute muscle to relax. So just like when you do a bicep curl, okay? When you're doing a bicep curl, the triceps are told to relax. So now the front of the hip is told to be strong and tight. The backside is told to relax. We go to walk. We need our glutes to walk correctly. But the glutes are not going to fire correctly because we have a tight hip flexor muscle. So instead of the glute muscle doing the work, now other muscles, the synergistic muscles, 
are going to do the work. So now the hamstring muscle is going to do the work that the glute muscle is supposed to be doing. Next thing you know, the hamstring muscle gets tight. So you're saying, oh, my hamstrings are so tight. It might not be because your hamstrings are so tight that they're tight. They're doing work they're not supposed to be doing because the hip flexor muscle is so tight. So we have an imbalance here. And the hamstring is not designed to do the work that the glute's designed to do. The, the, the end of the hamstring muscle that comes up in, into your backside is very thin and then it fans out a little bit and gets wider down near the knee. It's just not designed to do the work that the glute muscle's designed to do. Next thing you know, what happens? We get a hamstring injury because you have what we call gluteal amnesia because your glutes aren't firing and not working the way they're supposed to work. This can happen on any joint in the body, basically. When one muscle's been shortened and it's overactive and the other muscle opposite has now been lengthened and it's weak. It's a real problem. It can affect performance for sure because if now we're in here and we're going to try to use this shoulder joint the way we was designed to be used, but we can't do what it's supposed to do because this muscle's tight and these muscles back here are too loose and we're hunched over like this. Next thing you know, we have shoulder pain. Shoulder pain, we can't exercise, we can't exercise, we can't get results. Nobody wants shoulder pain, right? Same thing with the hip joint. Right? So now we can't exercise because our glutes aren't working. We now have knee pain because of that. Our hamstrings are tight and we have a hamstring strain. Well, whatever it is, our low back is starting to bother us because we have these muscle imbalances. So it's more than just going in a door jam and stretching your chest. It's more than just getting on one knee and stretching your hip flexor. There's other things that need to be involved in a program to make sure that we keep the body correctly balanced between flexibility and, and strength. It, it's a complicated thing, but I hope that sort of helps, it, makes it easier to understand. So we want these filaments to be over, just right over each other the way they're supposed to be. And when they get a little bit longer, maybe about 20 cent, 20, when that muscle gets about 20% longer, that's at its maximum power. We get that muscle that's overstretched, it gets way far apart. They're not even touching anymore, right? So we can't get that, that contraction going. Muscle's weak. We crunch it down the muscle, it gets compressed, so now these are nice and tight, so they can't go anywhere, so we can't have a contraction there. So you can see how the muscles, just, just by being too long or too short, they, they get messed up, and they can't produce the force that they need to produce. So that's why it's so important to make sure that when you're working on a program, when someone's designing a program for you, that they know and understand how the body works. So they know and understand the imbalances and what can happen and what can't happen, how to make the body work better so you get better results and reduce the risk for injury. So we get into a gym and we go to the gym and what do we do? We get in there, we do a lot of bench press stuff, right? So that tightens up all these muscles, the muscles in our back get weak, or we really love to sit on that machine and do knee extensions to work the front of those thighs. Next thing you know, we have an imbalance because the front of our thighs, we're a very quad dominant society. Get too tight, we got some problems. We like to do get on the machine and do inner thigh because that's gonna help our inner thighs, right? Next thing you know, our outer hips are weak and the outer hip is extremely important for walking. Okay, and stabilization of the pelvis. So these kind of things, just going around in the circuit, doing some exercises, jumping on machines, not knowing what's going on. Granted, you're doing something, but you may be doing something to actually hurt your body. So if you need help with this, I'm more than happy, happy, more than happy to help you with this. Pro, write a program for you. Come on into the studio. Come into the coaching center. We can get you set up. If you're with too far away from us, make sure whoever you're working with knows and understands this. So if you have knee pain or you have back pain, it may have nothing to do with the joint. It probably doesn't. It has probably has to do with some kind of muscle imbalance, and it needs to be strained out. Simple stretching, some specific strength training. Take care of it for you. So that's what I have for you today. I appreciate you watching. Hope this simplifies it for you a little bit. I'll give you more insight on how to get fit, feel young, and live better next Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Be safe, and uh, I'll see you next week. Have a great night.